Hey guys, Vox Education here and welcome back to the Blueprint Creation Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be teaching you how to create um, and load levels. So having said that, I've created a little checkpoint object here. And when you actually walk into it, it will transfer from one level to another one. So I'm going to be showing you how to actually set that all up inside of Blueprints, the commands and all the nodes used. And hopefully you can go ahead and by the end of the tutorial, recreate it for itself. So so as you can see right now, um, level transitioning isn't too smooth, both levels of mine are actually quite big, they are full completed game levels um, for a game that I was working from, but as you can see I've sort of loaded into the next level here from a space station to some kind of uh, abandoned subway station. Anyway, so you don't have to use all the levels that I'm using, you can do whatever you want really, um, but anyway let's go ahead and uh, get started. So. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and delete the blueprint class that we've got here. And that's what we're going to be working with today, actually. We're going to be working with a blueprint class. So first things first, go ahead and right click in the content browser and add a new blueprint class. Now we're going to go ahead and press actor for this, uh, for this, ob you know, this class. And we're going to call it checkpoint or end game. Yeah, let's just call it end game. And once we've done that, just go ahead and open it up. And we need to add a few little things into that. So the first thing we need to add is a, um, a static mesh. That is just purely for aesthetic reasons, really. You don't have to add a static mesh if you don't want to. Um, but, you know, if you want it to be a visual object that the player can see, the player can walk into, then go ahead and add a static mesh. And from the drop down here, you can just go ahead and type any static mesh you want in. Or you can select something from the content browser and then just go ahead and press this little arrow here. But I'm just going to go ahead and use an asset that I know works well. And I've got that here. This you won't have, just use whatever you want. If you wanted to, you could also go a little bit further and add um, particle systems if you wanted to. So you can add smoke, whatever whatever you've got really. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick look. Um, let's see, what have we got? In here I've got loads of particle systems from uh, the game I was working on called Network. Um, you guys don't really need to worry about that for now. Um, but I'm just trying to select a nice one, but I can't seem to find the one that I had before. So let's just go and add some fire in there because fire is always nice. Okay, uh, maybe this fire doesn't want to work. We're just going to add in some steam. Steam is cool. Um, so the next thing we need is we need some kind of volume for the player to walk into. This is essentially going to allow us to detect uh, collisions. So when the player walks onto it, we can fire off some kind of event. So go to add component and then scroll down and look for collision. And we're going to add in box collision. Now, once we've got the box collision, just go ahead and scale it up, down, whatever. I'm going to try and make sure it covers the entire uh, base of this little checkpoint uh, static mesh I've got here. Gonna make it nice and tall as well. And now whenever the player walks in here, he should have no problem uh, triggering this little event. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go over to the event graph and we can actually start scripting in the functionality. So what we're gonna do here is, um, Sorry, yeah, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go with the box collision and we're going to go ahead and add event for box. You right click, add event for box, collision, and then add on component begin overlap. So once we've done that, what we need to do is we need to use the open level uh, function. And this function is essentially going to allow us to transition between levels. So if I go ahead and hook the two execute no um, options up here, and then what we need to do now is we need to set the level, uh, the level name. The level name is essentially going to be um, the level that you want to load once the player actually collides with this object. So you need to make sure you get the name exactly right. So the best way to do this is probably going to be going to open level and then seeing what you've got here and copy the uh, level names exactly. So try and get all the capitals in there as well. But let's just go ahead and type that in. So one of my levels is network underscore subway. 
go ahead and press enter and that is as simple as it is to transition between levels. So if we go ahead and drag this blueprint class into the scene now, you can see it looks exactly how it does in the blueprint, in the blueprint class. It's got its smoke, it's got the static mesh and it's got the volume as well. And when we go ahead and press play, when it loads and press possess and we go ahead and walk into this, it's going to change the level. There is you know that odd transition you can add in our loading screens but that's going to be something for another episode but in any second now you should see that it does open up that other level for me anyway that is pretty much everything i wanted to go over in this episode um you can create this however you want to you could implement it into some kind of storyline game whatever you're doing um just play around with it add in other things like particle systems meshes just make it nice and visual play around with the functionality um but yeah thanks for watching and i will see you next time goodbye